Rockefeller Plaza. Studies show that marriages these days are ending progressively earlier, with 25% of divorces occurring within two years of the wedding day. This new marital pattern, termed a starter marriage, generally lasts five years or less and ends before children begin. Journalist Pamela Paul's pioneering study of this recent phenomenon is revealed in her book, The Starter Marriage and the Future of Matrimony. Pamela, good morning. Good morning. Well, let's talk first about this. I know you had a starter marriage of your own by this definition. And then you went ahead and interviewed 60 couples. What would you say that you found in common among the people you talked to? Well, I found that and you know, most people hadn't given the idea of marriage a great deal of thought before they got married. In fact, a lot of them were really focused on the wedding day. We live in this kind of matrimonia culture where celebrity weddings and year and a half preparations for the walk down the aisle are becoming the norm. And so people really paid a lot of attention to that and then didn't give so much thought to, well, what happens for the 50 years that follow. But you think that there's more to it even than that just sort of being seduced by all the hoopla and the fun of actually having a wedding. You think society has changed and so people going into the marriage maybe have different expectations about what's going to happen. Right. I mean, studies show that nine out of ten high schoolers and twenty-somethings expect to find their soulmate in marriage and they also expect to find a best friend and a lover and a and financial a partner. partner. <laughs> exactly. So people have very high expectations and yet they don't have much experience or familiarity with seeing a long-term egalitarian marriage work out. This is also a generation that's different in that many of their parents have been divorced. How does that affect young people who are going into marriage? All right, this is the first children of divorce generation and I think that impacts all people, not only the ones who had divorced parents, but also those who saw their friends have, you know, their parents get divorced um, when they were young. And ironically, um, they seem convinced that divorce isn't going to happen to them. At the same time, they know that it's an option. And I think that the more positive thing to come out of this is that people know that they don't want to inflict a divorce on their own children. And so they, when they find themselves in a bad marriage, they might think, well, let's nip this in the bud. Let's get out before we have children, before we impact someone else. Given the fact that times these days seem more uncertain, do you anticipate that there are actually going to be more starter marriages? I hope not, but I think that a lot of the underlying factors that led the people in the 90s to go into starter marriages and to jump out um, are still going strong. I think that, you know, in times of economic in un uncertainty and global instability, people kind of jump into marriage as this, you know, one stable, secure thing. We saw that in the recession in the early 90s, and so we could be seeing it in the years to come. You found in your study of these 60 couples that a lot of these young people were actually viewed from the outside as kind of power couples. They looked like they had it all. I mean, are they in essence sort of working on everything except the marriage? Right, yeah, you don't look at them and think like, oh, well, they're, they're divorce types. Um, a lot of these people sort of look like the perfect couples. You know, they went to a great school and they got a terrific job and moved into their apartment and were living in a fun city and had this great social life and marriage was sort of the last item, you know, to sort of check off the list. And it's actually, though, really complicated. I mean, if you're trying to do the two-career thing and maybe one person gets a job that goes over here or over there, I mean, it can be very difficult, can it? Maybe harder than in the past to make the marriage work. Yeah, I think marriage, you know, marriage isn't this sort of stable, you know, institution that's, that's eternal and, and unchanging. It really does change with the times. And right now, you do have marriages that are challenged by the fact that both partners have their own careers, have their own independent lives, um, often dated a lot of people before they got married, and they have this wide range of experiences and challenges, and that makes marriage very difficult. A lot of young people believe that if they actually just live with their significant other before they get married, that that's right. going to fix things. Have you found that that actually works? You know, I think there are studies that show on the, you know, that cohabitation is a good thing, and there are studies that show that it's a bad thing. I think most people approach cohabitation, as you say, a sort of testing ground for marriage to see if it works out. Um, I don't know that, that you know, it necessarily prevents a bad marriage um, from taking place, because a lot of the people I talked to did live together. What do you hope people will get from your book? Well, I hope that people who've had starter marriages of their own will find comfort and, and really learn something from other people's experiences. I know that when it happened to me, I really felt very much alone. Nobody sends out divorce announcements the way they send out a wedding announcement. Um, so it was really helpful to talk to other people. 
And then I also hope that people who are considering marriage, even if you know not right now, but someday, would read about it and learn from other people's mistakes because divorce is a painful thing to go through. I wouldn't recommend it. So And think seriously before they start. Pam, Absolutely. Thank you so much for your thoughts on this. Thanks for having me. And if you'd like to read an excerpt from The Starter Marriage and the Future of Matrimony, you can log on to our website at today.msnbc.com. Katie? All right, Sarah, thank you so much, of course.